Welcome to this video about electrical installation of the Danfoss EKE100 superheat controllers and valve drivers. The EKE100 installation is split into three small videos, which includes this video showing how to do electrical installation of the EKE100, including terminal overview and cabling guidelines. Second video showing how to do mechanical installation of the EKE100, including how to mount it on DIN rail and how to demount it. And the third video showing electrical wiring examples for the EKE100, depending on application modes. In these videos, we'll give you important installation tips, ensuring a safe and reliable system operation. So go ahead and check out the EKE100 installation video, which will meet your needs. In this EKE100 electrical installation video, we'll show you the main EKE100 technical specifications, an overview of the EKE100 connection terminals the EKE100 signal sharing with other equipment. We will also show you recommended EKE100 cabling and EKE100 Modbus installation and reset of the Modbus address. Here you see some of the main technical specifications of the EKE100 models for one and two bipolar stepper motor valve control. It is very important to observe and install the EKE100 according to these technical specifications. Here you see more of the main technical specifications of the EKE100 models. We will not go into details with all these technical specifications since you can find more information in the EKE100 datasheet. However, we will just highlight a few important details from the specifications. As shown in the technical specifications just mentioned, you can see all the products and services which the EKE100 can work together with. They are also shown here in the Danfoss expansion ecosystem. It is important to know this when connecting the EK100 to all the equipment to be used in a given application. As also specified, the EK100 works only with bipolar types of stepper motor valves. Here you see an overview of the connection ports, also called terminals, of the EK100 models for one and two bipolar stepper motor valve control. As seen, the layout of the connection terminals is the same for both models. The only difference is that the two valve control model has two valve outputs. Please pay attention to the notes about the DI and the power supply shown here. See in another EKE100 installation video how to use the EKE100 connection terminals and how to electrically wire the EKE100 with other equipment. Here you see the recommended connection terminals to use when using the EKE100 as a valve driver. See in another EKE100 installation video how to electrically wire the EKE100 when using it as a valve driver. The EKE100 can share signal with other relevant equipment in different ways. Here is an example of signal sharing for one EKE100 one valve version and one EKE 2U AC or DC power supply. We will not go into details here, since you can find more information in the EKE100 installation guide. Here you see another example of signal sharing. In this case, two EKE100 one valve versions sharing signal with one EKE2U power supply, however only possible with DC supply. Finally, here you see an example of signal sharing for one EKE100 two valves version and one EKE2U AC or DC power supply. Here you see listed guidelines and precautions related to EKE100 sharing signal with pressure and temperature sensors, as also illustrated here. Here you see the EKE100 valve connection terminals and how to connect the colored wires of a standard M12 connection cable for different types of stepper motor valves. This cabling information is also available in the EKE100 installation guide. You can find more information regarding configuration of non Danfoss stepper motor valves in the EKE100 user guide. Here you see listed guidelines and precautions regarding cable dimensions, cable lengths between EKE100 and relevant connected equipment, as well as guidelines and precautions regarding how to wire mains and signal cables. This is also illustrated here with the EKE100 connected to the different relevant equipment. Here you see listed guidelines and precautions regarding EKE100 Modbus installation. You can find details about Modbus installation in the EKE100 
installation guide. If needed, then you can manually reset the Modbus address as follows. Remove the power supply from EKE 100. Remove other connectors if mounted. Connect terminal BAT plus to plus 5V slash 18V. Reconnect EKE 100 to the power supply. The Modbus communication options are now reset to factory default as specified in the guidelines. After resetting, then remove the power supply and the connection between BAT plus and plus 5V slash 18V. Then remount all the connectors removed earlier and remount the power supply. You have now completed the electrical installation video for EKE 100 superheat controllers and valve drivers. So now you have seen the main EKE 100 technical specifications. You have seen an overview of the EKE 100 connection terminals. You have seen the EKE 100 signal sharing with other equipment. You have seen the recommended EKE 100 cabling. You have seen the EKE 100 Modbus installation guidelines and how to reset the Modbus address. And you have seen where to find more information about the EKE 100 electrical installation. All this ensuring a correct and safe system operation. Please check out the other online videos about EKE 100 installation. Have a look at the other online learnings about the Danfoss EKE 100 superheat controllers and valve drivers. Thanks for watching.